Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al-Khalifa, today issued Edict 7 of 2018, appointing directors at the National Oil and Gas Authority. Under the edict, Mohammed Saad Abdul al-Hajri was appointed as Human and Financial Resources Director, is Ahmed Ali Ali Manna as Planning and Development Director. Abdulaziz Adrakaida Mohammed Saeed as Petroleum Industries Development Director and Adnan Saeed Mohammed Al Maharik as Exploration and Production Development Director. The Oil Minister will implement the edict which takes immediate effect and will be published in the Official Gazette. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today the outgoing Ambassador of Pakistan to Bahrain, Javed Malik. His Royal Highness underlined the distinguished bilateral ties, cooperation and coordination at all levels, which are based on the mutual keenness to further develop the deep-rooted relations between the two friendly countries. His Royal Highness noted the appreciation Pakistan receives for its stances and efforts to maintain stability and combat terrorism in all its forms. The Crown Prince noted the outstanding efforts of the outgoing Pakistani ambassador during his tenure in Bahrain, which contributed to further bolster bilateral relations. He wished the ambassador success in his further duties. For his part, Ambassador Malik expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his keenness on strengthening the Bahraini-Pakistani relations and for the support he has received and contributed to the success of his diplomatic mission in the Kingdom. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education, held the ninth award ceremony of the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the use of information and communication technologies in education. His Majesty the King delegated Deputy Prime Minister Jawad bin Salam Al Arayat to attend the ceremony and present the award to the winners. The ceremony was also attended by the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali al Nuaymi, UNESCO Director General Audrey Azoulay, and other officials. The Director General of UNESCO praised the initiative of His Majesty the King to launch this important international award, which coincides with the objectives of UNESCO in the dissemination of education for all. She also commend commended the Ministry of Education for its role in strengthening ties and cooperation with the organisation in various fields. The Minister of Education, Dr Majid bin Ali al Nuaymi, said that the number of projects admitted to compete for the award reached 700 projects, of which 143 projects reached the final stage. Deputy Prime Minister Jawad bin Salam al Arayad, the Director General of UNESCO and the Minister of Education, handed over the award to the winners as follows. National Programme for Dissemination of Information and Communication Technologies for Education from Morocco and the Distance Learning Initiative from India. On the occasion, the Deputy Prime Minister, representative of His Majesty the King, praised the award and the international reputation it has earned, stressing that it is a scientific humanitarian initiative by His Majesty the King to reward initiatives that projects that serve education through the use and employment of technology making education accessible to all. He pointed out that this great gathering reflects the great appreciation of His Majesty and the Kingdom of Bahrain. On the sidelines of the ceremony, the Deputy Prime Minister, accompanied by UNESCO Director General and the Minister of Education, inaugurated an exhibition, organised by the Ministry of Education, which included highlights of the educational process in the Kingdom and aspects of cultural progress in the field of education. A number of Bahraini students in the French universities participated in organising the ceremony. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, headed the delegation of Bahrain, participating in the 35th session of the Arab Interior Minister's Council held today in Algeria. The Minister's Council praised the role of security bodies in Arab countries in thwarting terrorism acts and eliminating a number of terrorist cells and organisations with foreign agenda aiming to disturb security and stability in Arab countries. The Council affirmed cooperation to prevent such terrorist activities and drain the intellectual and financial sources. The Arab Ministers of Interior stressed the importance of unifying Arab efforts to face the current intellectual, security challenges and combating extremism through social media networks. 
On the sidelines of the meeting, the Minister of Interior met with His Royal Highness the Saudi Minister of Interior and Honorary President of the Arab Interior Minister's Council, Prince Abdulaziz bin Saud bin Naif Al Saud, during which he congratulated His Royal Highness on becoming the Council's Honorary President in recognition of the role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in supporting security cooperation. Wishing His Royal Highness further success. The meeting discussed security cooperation and coordination, as well as issues of mutual interest. The Interior Minister then delivered the upcoming speech. الأمير عبد العزيز بن سعود بن نايف آل سعود على تزكيته بالإجماع رئيسا فخريا لمجلس وزراء الداخلية العرب متمنيا لسموه التوفيق والنجاح وأني أنتهز هذه الفرصة لأشيد بهذا الحضور المسؤول لهذا الاجتماع وهذا الأمر بحد ذاته يعبر عن مدى اهتمام القيادات الأمنية العربية وتصميمها على تحقيق الأمن والاستقرار بالرغم من صعوبة التحديات وكما تعلمون فإننا اليوم نواجه تنامي أشكال الجريمة المنظمة بأساليب مبتكرة وتنوع التحديات الأمنية إضافة إلى النقل الخطيرة التي وصلت إليها الجريمة العابرة للحدود وخصوصا في ظل بيئة تساعد على انتشار الأفكار المتطرفة الأمر الذي جعل من الإرهاب تهديدا عاما لحياة الناس في مناطق متعددة من العالم أعني بذلك مشارق الأرض ومغاربها أصحاب السمو والمعالي إن أخوانكم من رجال الأمن في مملكة البحرين يتعاملون بصورة مستمرة مع تدخلات إيرانية ممنهجة تستهدف المساس بأمننا الداخلي واستقرارنا فإيران اليوم أصبحت ملجأ لمن يرتكب جرما ويكون مطلوبا للعدالة وقد تجاوزت المواثيق والأعراف الدولية فهي لا تعترف بما هو صادر عن المنظمة الدولية الانتربول أو بالنشرات الحمراء لقد وضعت نفسها فوق القانون وسخرت أراضيها ومعسكراتها لتدريب الإرهابيين وتصدير الأسلحة والمتفجرات وهذا موثق بالأدلة والبراهين القاطعة وإن تدخلها في شؤوننا الداخلية هو متعدد المحاور على سبيل المثال المشاريع الاستثمارية والاقتصادية ويقصد منها توفير أموال بالداخل لتخدم نفوذها سواء من قبل أشخاص أو مؤسسات أو لتنتهي في أيدي منفذي العمليات الإرهابية المدارس الإيرانية تعمل على نشر الثقافة الفارسية وتكون قاعدة من الشباب تؤمن بمبادئ الثورة الخمينية وولاية الفقيه ويكون ولاءها لإيران إضافة إلى تجنيد قياديين للتيارات السياسية وخصوصا من قبل الأشخاص الدارسين في إيران أيضا ذريعة حماية الطائفة الشيعية وهذه عبارة عن وسيلة لنشر ثقافة التطرف الطائفي على حساب الوطنية من خلال ما تسيطر عليه من جمعيات خيرية وحوزات دينية مما يؤدي إلى وجود قاعدة متطرفة تدين بالولاء للقيادة في إيران على حساب الولاء للوطن وهذا الأمر يشمل شرائح مختلفة في المجتمع من الرجال والنساء من كل الفئات سياسيين ورجال دين وأصحاب رؤوس أموال ومهنيين كتاب وعلاميين فلقد أرادت إيران أن تشعل فتيل أزمة طائفية إلا أننا والله الحمد لم نعطيها الفرصة لتحقيق هذا الهدف الخطير 
وأن تخطيطهم لتنفيذ مآربهم هو تخطيط بعيد الأمد وإننا تعاملنا مع هذه التدخلات على مختلف المحاور بتكاتف وتعاون من قبل الجميع On the sidelines of the meeting, the Minister of Interior met with His Royal Highness the Saudi Minister of Interior and Honorary President of the Arab Interior Ministers' Council, Prince Abdulaziz bin Saud bin Naif al Saud, during which he congratulated His Royal Highness on becoming the Council's Honorary President, in recognition of the role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in supporting security cooperation, wishing His Royal Highness further success. The meeting discussed security cooperation and coordination, as well as issues of mutual interest. The Minister of Interior also met with the UAE Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Interior, His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Saeed bin Zayed Al Nayan. Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah praised the deep-rooted historic relations between the two countries' leaderships and people. The two sides discussed means of bolstering cooperation in the field of security work as well as issues of mutual concern. The Minister of Interior met with his Lebanese counterpart, Nihad Al Marshnuk where he praised the two countries' keenness to further develop joint action and face the increasing security challenges at the regional and international levels, at the forefront of which is combating terrorism. The Minister of Interior also met with his Jordanian counterpart, Samir al mubaydin in which they discussed ways to further develop security cooperation and coordination, in addition to other regional developments. The Minister of Interior also met with the Minister of Interior of Iraq, Ghazm al-Araji, in which they discussed means of reinforcing cooperation between the two countries in the field of security work, as well as issues of mutual concerns. The Minister of Interior was accompanied by a delegation that included the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to Algeria, the Ministry of Interior's Under Secretary, as well as a number of officials in the Ministry. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, took part in the Arab League meeting at the ministerial level of its 149th ordinary meeting in Cairo today. The ministerial committee issued a communique condemning the Iranian interference as well as the continued sabotage activities in the internal affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain, praising Bahrain's efforts to combat terrorism. It praised the ability of the security authorities in the Kingdom of Bahrain to thwart a number of terrorist acts and plots as well as arrest 116 terrorist elements belonging to a terrorist organization, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and its foreign forces, including Azab al al haq and Hezbollah terrorist groups, which had formed, financed and trained its operatives to carry out a series of dangerous terrorist acts, to disrupt security and stability, and to strike the economy of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The committee reiterated its supports for the measures taken by the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to combat these acts of aggression, to protect the security and stability. The Kingdom of Bahrain presented a report on Iran's terrorist activities in Bahrain for the meeting of the Council. During the meeting of the Council of the League of Arab States, they discussed enhancing the joint Arab action, following up on the developments of the Palestinian issue and the Arab-Israeli conflict, and activating the Arab Peace Initiative. The latest developments were also discussed in Syria, Libya, Yemen and Sudan. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also signed the minutes of the Statute of the Arab Court for Human Rights with the Arab League Secretary General, Ahmed Abdu al -Ghith. He affirmed that establishing an Arab Court for Human Rights came as a result of the initiative of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa and the proposal submitted by the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Arab League which the Arab League Council has approved in the summit. Sheikh Khalid added that this reflects the keenness of His Majesty the King to promote respect for rights and freedom and also highlights the importance placed by the Kingdom of Bahrain to protecting human rights. The establishment of the Arab Court for Human Rights stems from the keenness of the state's parties to adhere to the human rights obligations. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also took part in the seventh meeting of the Arab Ministerial Quartet Committee to follow up on the developments of the crisis with Iran and ways to address the interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries. It was held today in the sidelines of the Arab League meeting at the ministerial level of its 149th ordinary meeting in Cairo, the Arab Republic of Egypt. The Ministerial Committee issued a communique condemning the Iranian interference 
as well as its continued sabotage activities in the internal affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain, praising Bahrain's efforts to combat terrorism. It praised the ability of security authorities in the Kingdom of Bahrain to thwart a number of terrorist acts and plots, as well as to arrest 116 terrorist elements belonging to a terrorist organisation, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and its foreign forces, including Asab Ahil al haq and Hezbollah terrorist groups, which had formed, financed and trained its operatives to carry out a series of dangerous terrorist acts to disrupt security and stability and to strike at the economy of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The committee reiterated its support for the measures taken by the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to combat these acts of aggression, to protect the security and stability. The committee condemned Iran's continued development of its ballistic missile programme of an offensive nature, as well as the launching of Iranian-made rockets through which the Houthi militia targeted cities and villages of Saudi Arabia, which poses a serious threat to security and stability in the region. It also stressed the need for Iran to comply with Security Council Resolution 2231 of 2015 regarding its missile programme. Also, the Minister of Foreign Affairs participated today in the Ministerial Committee of the Arab Peace Initiative, which was held on the sidelines of the 149th Ordinary Session of the Arab League Council at the ministerial level in Cairo, the Arab Republic of Egypt. The committee discussed the latest developments towards Jerusalem, the efforts and movements exerted by the mini-committee formed by the Council of the Arab League, the Palestinian efforts and moves in the international arena and the participation of President Mahmoud Abbas in the meeting of the Security Council. The meeting also discussed the latest developments in the Palestinian issue at the regional and international levels. The Minister of Foreign Affairs participated in the meeting of the Ministerial Committee of the Arab Peace Initiative. The Minister of Foreign Affairs participates in the meeting of the Ministerial Committee of the Arab Peace Initiative. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Egypt, Sami Shoukri. The meeting highlighted the distinguished relations between Bahrain and Egypt and the continuous development that reflect the strong joint cooperation between the two countries. It also stressed the importance of the continued coordination regarding all issues in various regional and international forums. The meeting also discussed latest regional developments as well as the issues on the agenda of the meeting. The Minister of Housing, Bazen bin Yaqub al Hamar, received at the Ministry's Court the affiliates of the First Deputy Prime Minister's Fellowship Programme for the Development of National Cadres in the framework of the familiarisation visit to the Ministries and Government Organisation to identify the nature of their work closely. The Housing Minister affirmed that the National Cadres Development Programme, sponsored by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, supports the formation of leading youth who contribute to the development march, expressing confidence in the continuation of the programme's success in the development of Bahraini competencies. The Minister hailed the programme's goals that are based on honing the professional skills of national cadres. Al Hamar delivered a presentation on the plans and the programmes of the Ministry and its efforts to provide housing for low-income citizens asserting that the Ministry is making remarkable progress in constructing and allocating housing units. He also reviewed the features of the new city projects that are constructed according to the latest modern concepts. The Minister also delivered a presentation on the Ministry's steps to activate a partnership with the private sector. The meeting discussed the Ministry's vision to develop housing policies in cooperation with the United Nations Development Office through the cooperation document side between the two parties. Following the meeting, the programme's affiliates toured the Ministry's departments and customer service centre to identify the Ministry's work and administration mechanism. The Minister of Information Affairs, Ali bin Mohammed al Mehi, attended the familiarisation meeting organised by the National Communication Centre at the Ministry of Information Affairs in the presence of members from the representatives and Shura councils, journalists and media personnel. The Minister affirmed the keenness of the National Communication Centre on unifying the government media approach and promoting it locally and internationally through strengthening the partnership between official authorities and national organisations. He expressed pride in the young national media cadres and its role in activating the centre's role as a strategic connecting point between government authorities. 
He noted the keenness to provide all potentialities and facilities for the National Communication Centre to continue its duties effectively and professionally as a centre that is financially and administratively independent from the Ministry to serve the media development according to a modern mechanism that develops human resources and technical competence. Arumehi affirmed that conducting the meeting affirms the importance of concerning the national efforts of the executive, legislative and judicial authorities, as well as the journalistic and civil organisations, as main partners in developing national media, increasing its impact and supporting its role in protecting national security and stability. The Chief Executive of the National Communication Centre, the NCC, Dr Mohammed Ali Bazad, gave a presentation on the goals of the centre, its duties and jurisdiction, according to Royal Decree 1 of 2016, on the development of the plans and strategies of the government media approach, as well as managing the operations and activities of communication and public information, to contribute to the consolidation of the speech and highlighting it in various forums and media, local, regional and international. He highlighted the development of relationships and positive partnerships with several news agencies and regional and international press and media institutions for providing them with correct news and information and responding to any inaccurate reports or misinformation.